guys. So I made a post yesterday talking about consistency. And this, I'm holding my phone because I know it's gonna fall off this thing. I'm almost to the gym. Okay, so I made a post about consistency because I saw this post that some girl posted and it was about, you know, here's the secret to how I lost a bunch of weight and it was her secret was consistency, right? And it's probably maybe the three or four hundredth post I've seen in the fitness world about consistency. Consistency is key, it's all about consistency. And I started thinking about this and I was like, God, I wonder what that's like for people who have not yet built a consistent habit of going to the gym. I was like, I bet it, it it's just gonna become this like vehicle for shame and guilt. Like, I know I'm not being consistent. I suck. What's wrong with me? Just got to be more consistent. And we're like, we got to go deeper than that. Just like I'm ceaselessly amazed by the human body. I'm also ceaselessly amazed and fascinated by the human psyche and what makes us tick and talk. And when we fail to understand ourselves, so much shame and guilt ensues. There's so much out there where it's like, I know, I just, I know what I need to do. I just need to do it. I'm just not doing it because I suck and all this mentality. And it's like, meh. Let's go deeper than that. Let's go deeper than that. And so I started thinking about consistency and in my experience as a health coach, like what I see holds people back from being consistent. And um, I wanted to talk about like this side of the psyche is more in like the mindset realm of my coaching, but this side of the human psyche of why we avoid things. Okay, so first thing, first thing that like, I hope we all understand this about ourselves that anytime we're starting something new, there is going to be resistance there. Why? Because our brains are designed to help us not gas out early and make everything in our life hard by constantly changing, right? So our, our brains, our minds, our psyches are designed to take the path of least resistance so that we don't die earlier. Your brain consumes about 20% of your calories, right? It's, it's a huge energy consumer. And when we're starting to do new things that are completely uncomfortable and unfamiliar to us, our brain's like, eh, why don't you just do this same thing that you've been doing? Cause that will take less energy. So that in and of itself is really important to remember. You're not just like a failure or a loser. You're literally creating, I think, those habits. It's almost like creating new neural pathways. Think of like brushing your teeth. Do you sit there and you get out of bed and you're like, oh, I don't know, maybe I'll do it, maybe I won't. I don't know. Oh, am I gonna brush my teeth today? Mm. <laughs> no, because you've built this habit, right? You don't even think about it. It's just something you do. It's, it had, that habit has become the path of least resistance. It's not even a thought. And this is, that's how going to the gym is for me. It's not, I'm not sitting there like, am I going to go to the gym today? Hmm, I don't know. I got a lot going on. No, because I've built my life. I've built my day around that. And it's become so habitual. Yeah. Trying to motivate your, yourself. I don't, I'm not ever motivating myself to go to the gym. It's not even a thought. It's like brushing my teeth. It's just what I do at that time of day. And when I get there, you know, if I'm having a day where I'm like, dude, you've been pushing hard. You freaking depleted, dude. I'll just walk. I just walk uphill on the treadmill. I might do a little bit of mobility work or something, but it doesn't matter. I'm in here at that time. It's just not, it's not a question anymore. And so this comes, some people talk about decision fatigue, right? And so when you're coming into a new habit, I see this all the time. I mean, think about it. Imagine you're me as a health coach. Somebody gets super emotionally, something happens, right? They see a picture of themselves or they try on a shirt and they're like, oh, you look horrible. Or they see some picture on social media and they're like, I want to look like that. And it's this very emotionally driven, like yeah, frantic, like I want to get fit. And <laughs> that's when it's like, okay, that's cool. You had that moment with yourself, but now we need to go deeper and look into how can I create this pattern in my life so that I'm not avoiding it all the time. So um, one thing is creating an experience around it that you actually want to do and like to do. So maybe your entry point is just, I don't know, guys really like like jujitsu or boxing or, you know, maybe that's your entry point. Um, maybe you're, you're like, okay, I'm going to join a gym and I'm, or maybe I'm going to finally use my gym membership and I'm going to start going to the gym. But the thought of every single morning going and lifting weights, you're just like suddenly have other things to do because you, you have a, a, attached so much like unenjoyment, 
with that thing, I promise you will avoid it like crazy. Okay. In my business, I'm creating new things. I'm, I'm, um, you know, building an app right now. I've never built a freaking app. I'm like making developer accounts with Apple and Google and all this tax info. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, I've never done any of this stuff before. But like those moments I have learned and really truly through fitness and marathon running and, and, and weightlifting, I've learned like, it's going to be uncomfortable at first. It's going to be somewhat uncomfortable and I'm not going to be like, yeah, I'm the, I'm the, what's the, I'm the woman. It just doesn't sound like I'm the man, <laughs> but it's not going to feel like that at first. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to have some, you know, my ego is not going to be like, yeah, I'm the shiz. I got this stuff down. I know that I've learned that. Right. And so I know that if I just keep doing it, just like going and filming these workouts for the app, this has been a new thing for me doing like full workouts where I'm all mic'd up and I'm, that's not, what I sorry, disconnected. That's not what I normally do. So the, yes, the first few times I'm going to meet my videographer and starting to film these workouts and I'm like teaching while I'm working at doing a full workout. I felt the anxiety. I felt the discomfort. I felt that I don't want to do this, but I was like, I know that as I continue to just show up, just show up, just show up, just do the best that you can just show up. Now, by the end of it, it was like, even, you know, I, I've got like 60 videos. By the time I filmed some yesterday, it was like, okay, yeah, I know how to do this. You know, there were a lot of things like my sound kept messing up. I had to record a bunch of them all over again. The ones I was filming myself because I disconnected my mic while I was moving. I'm like, shit, you know, learning. I'm like, what is up with the focus on this thing? I don't know how to use a camera. <laughs> right. But I, it's like, just keep going because soon it will become like second nature. So there's like this twofold thing that happens when I, I have found is very, very helpful when I'm trying to build a new habit in my life. One, make it as positive as freaking possible. Okay. Build some sort of wins into it. Um, for the gym, for me, it's, it's music. It's the actual gym environment. I do not like working out at home. If I had to work out at home, mm, I'd be avoiding that like crazy. I just don't like it. I do not want to like go in another room in my house and just start doing burpees and crap. Personally, some people like working out at home. So know yourself. But if I get here to this gym and I pull up, I'm here, I'm ready, I'm committed. And I like the social aspect of it. I like having a turf. I like all sorts of things about it, right? I love my music. I'm very intentional with my playlist. I'm always looking for new songs. I'm, you know, my friends, I'm like, send me your workout jams, you know? <laughs> So I'm building wins. I've got caffeinated pre-workout. So I'm getting a little bit high. That feels good. Right. And you know, when I first started working out though, when I first started lifting, I'm sure some of you guys have heard me say this. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I was so intimidated. I had a piece of paper that my trainer friend showed me some things and it said like arms out to sides, arms out to front. <laughs> so like that, I did that workout for three months straight. I was like, okay, it was my entry point. And that's how it all started. What's up, Ellie? What's my favorite playlist? Uh, I don't know. It's on my YouTube music, which I can't share. So I don't even, I don't think my workout playlist would be professionally appropriate <laughs> to share, but, but you're my friend. So I'll, I'll send it to you. <laughs> like, people ask me all the time, can you share your playlist? I'm like, um, probably not. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> you gotta be cool. You gotta be cool. I have like an alter ego that comes out when I'm working out and it's a bunch of cocky, bad word shit. <laughs> some of it's, some of it's, you know, some of it's okay. Um, anyway, um, so when you like anything you're doing, meditation, maybe you want to get into some, or, you know, getting up early morning routine, you gotta have resistance at first because it's new and your brain is like, e. I don't want to do a new thing. This is how we do life. This is ease, right? So one, giddy up for some resistance and know that it's not because you're a lose, a weak loser and a failure and you just don't have discipline and all these things. That is literally how your brain is designed to be. So you don't gas out early, making everything harder than it needs to be. So take the shame and guilt away from it. That is normal. Okay. Two, build as many positive wins around it as you can. Like for meditation, for me, for example, I have apps that I can use if I feel like it. I have a breathing app. I got all my little crystals. I got my Zen spray from MitoZen that puts you in your parasympathetic and holy crap. I like totally like <laughs> drop in 
it's really intense just so you know it, there's a link on my website very a little small discount it's pricey but it's cool zen spray it's from dr john laurence um so I, I like i've got my cool little spot that i sit and like just everything about it i like right get my coffee going it's just this little ritual and i doing that building wins around a new thing as much as you can to make it a positive experience will make you want to do it more because you start to look forward to it here's another thing if you start shaming and guilting yourself every single time you don't integrate this new habit, you're like, oh, loser, no, you can do it. You never stick to anything, any new goals that you set. You're going to build a, an avoidance towards that thing because you've now associated, with, associated it with this mechanism that brings you into pain, shame, guilt, pain. You know what I'm saying? So just when you do do it, be like, dude, that was, I felt good when I did that. I like that. If you miss it, it's like, hmm, noted. I don't feel as good today. I don't feel as focused. Or I don't feel as energized. Huh, can't wait to get back and do it again. Right? And then also know that some of that discomfort, some of the resistance, you know, some like when you're not good at something at first, you're not good at meditating. You're not good at working out. You're not good at cooking healthy food. There has to be a little bit of, it's okay, like positive self-talk. It's okay. Everybody starts somewhere. You're doing great. Just keep going. You got this. And that, that really, I got that from marathon running. Positive self-talk for me came from marathon running because you have to. You have no other choice, dude. You signed up for this thing. You've been training for like four months for it. You're out there and it's starting to suck. Like you literally have no other option but positive self-talk, in my opinion. So... Yeah, and Boston Marathon was freaking brutal for me. Brutal. I was in ketosis. I couldn't bring my ketones. I was dehydrated. My legs felt like they were going to explode. I was like going in and out. Like I was like, oh, I'm going to be one of those people that I wake up in the emergency room, right? That's where I was at. And the only thing I had was positive self-talk. That's it. There was a moment in time I can remember exactly where I was on the course. And I just started going, did it, did it on every step. Good job. Did it. Good job. Another one another one. Every step, you guys, I was on like mile 18. There's 26 miles in a marathon. That's a long ways to go still eight miles when you're at that level. Right. And so that like, good job, good job, good job. Did it, did it. That mentality I've taken into my life. It's like, dude, keep going, keep going. You got this. You got this is okay. You're doing great. Just keep going. You'll figure it out. Everybody starts somewhere. <laughs> I'm your positive self-talk, but really, truly like watch yourself. Because if all you're doing in these new habits you're, you're integrating is like, I'm not good at this. I didn't do a good job. I could have pushed myself harder, but you're not doing a good enough job. You will attach a negative um, association to that thing. Don't do that. Keep telling yourself, good, good job. Good job, dude. You got in there. Good, good work. Um, you should start powerlifting. I bet you could lift a lot. You know, I've just never really been interested in powerlifting. Um... Maybe, maybe someday I'll get the powerlifting bug. I don't know. I, uh, I do a neurotyping by Christian Thibodeau is something that I do in my coaching and powerlifting really, really goes well for people who are dopamine dominant. Um, so personality traits of someone who's dopamine dominant is sometimes I appear more dopamine dominant than I am on social. Cause I usually make these videos when I'm like super caffeinated and just worked out. So my dopamine's like through the roof. Um, but I'm actually not dopamine dominant. I'm adrenaline dominant and my, it's called two way on his little thing. And we, we like variety variety makes really great entrepreneurs, but you have to harness that shit in. <laughs> um, have I ever gone to the gym and went through it, but hated it? Only when I was competing. Only when I was competing. That's why I didn't like that competing lifestyle. Because it was like, dude, you just have to freaking do this. And then sometimes I had to do like two gym sessions a lot of days. And it's like two in the afternoon. And I got to go do a hit session when none of my neurochemicals are in a state to be doing a hit session. That's the only time I've ever done that. I will never do that again. <laughs> I love my lifestyle. I love eating healthy. I love not having to be super stressed about it. Oh, and that was the last, another thing I wanted to say. I talked to a guy in the gym today and it was like so perfect because I had just posted that about consistency, being consistent. And you can kind of tell, but you can't really tell on social. I'm like so orange right now because I got a spray, spray tan last night for my, uh, doing some more videos today. And by the way, I thought I finished all my workout videos and like 10 of them were like messed up. So I got to go <laughs> back. 
But that's how it is. It's like, it's okay. Just keep going. You got this. You'll get better as you go. But anyway, he goes, he's like, oh, did you get a spray tan? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and he's asking what for and stuff. And I'm telling him what I do for a living. And um, he was like, oh, he's like, so is your nutrition like super on point? And I was like, I'm in a good place with nutrition. I wouldn't say I'm, I'm, I just don't stress about it too much. I try to eat, you know, really nutrition, nutritionally dense food. If I eat something that isn't, I'm cool with it. And I just move on. He's like, dude, that's where I'm at. And he's in there every day. He's in there every day. He's very fit. And he was like, yeah, he's like, I don't really care like what my body looks like anymore or like anything. He's like, I just love being in here. I just, I just love, I love it. It's like a hobby. And that, when you get to that place with exercise where you just love it, you just want to go do it because it's like you you really truly enjoy it which you will get there you will get there it's not always there at first that's that part i'm talking about of like good keep going everybody starts somewhere just keep on you're doing great you're doing great you will get to a point where you're literally stronger you have a better nervous system connection to your muscles and it's like more fun because you're better at it <laughs> right so Whatever it is for you, we all need some sort of outlet to be physical. Our lifestyles are just not conducive to health. And more and more in my career, I'm like, dude, if you're not working out, like, I'm sorry. You're just really, really minimizing your potential of how you can feel every day inside your body, both in your body and in your mind. It's got to be part of it. It's got to be part of it. People are always like, I lost weight without working out. And I'm like, that's cool. That, that's great. That's, I'm, you know, I'm glad you lost some body fat, but like you're missing out on like so many hormone benefits. Um, just literally the, you know, somebody asked me one time, they're like, you have so much energy. Why do you think you have so much energy? And I was like, I think because life is so easy. Like everyday life is so easy because I can do so much more because I'm in good shape. Like I can crush a hit workout. I can run for a long time. I can lift heavy and keep going. I have a lot of endurance. And so like regular everyday life is very like not hard. <laughs> you know what I mean? Cruising around shopping. I don't get tired. I have good blood sugar management. I eat really nutritious things. And I, but like the workout piece is so important so you can feel stronger. And so the rest of your life is easier, right? So you're not going to feel like that out of the gate. There's so many people limit themselves in lives because of their ego, because they only want to do things that they feel like they're really good at. So when you start to go into something you're not good at, like working out or meditating or whatever, all of a sudden, what are you doing? Something you're already good at, like cleaning or doing laundry or so I guess I need to organize my pantry today because <laughs> you're already good at that you know or something that's easy oh I'm just gonna get on social media because it's easy right and we are designed to take the path of least resistance and do what's easy so there's there's a moment in time there where we got to learn how to push through positive self-talk because we know that the outcome is worth it um when I worked out on a team, they made me do bodybuilding and hypertrophy. That's great. Yeah, I know a lot of uh, power lifters are that way, which is definitely huge and important. So you have the, um, uh, I would say, like stabilization <laughs> that you need in order to not get injured. Do you think a bigger guy like me should do more hypertrophy, maybe load than deload? Um, so, I mean, I won't speak too much on, on powerlifting since I'm not a powerlifting coach. I will defer probably to my friend, uh, John Mata Nutella strong here. He's a good friend of mine on, on social media. He's, he's a uh, coach and very well-rounded, but I do think like with powerlifters, a couple things as one is being in that anabolic state all the time that most pallet power lifters are in by eating at a surplus and all of that. It can create such an inflamed state because you're never in repair mode. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then you're inflaming more in those workouts by going so heavy all the time. So I do think it's good to take a break from that sometimes. Allow your body to like not be so in such anabolic pro-inflammatory state all the time, you know? So, I mean, do what you will. It's your sport. But I see a lot of power lifters and I'm like, shit, man, you guys look so inflamed. I can see it in your face and your eyes and your skin is all red and, you know, so... It is important, I think, to uh, explore some other outlets sometimes, you know. But, yeah, hit up my friend uh, Nutella Strong here on Instagram if you want some more 
guidance on that. Um, lots of people think pretty women don't power lift. There's a lot of pretty women who power lift. It's just not really my, my cup of cup of tea. Maybe someday. Um, next time try and talk about heavy weights. Cause I saw crazy people hold heavy weights and then they got torn muscles. Um, so heavy is relative, right? Heavy is relative on TikTok. I'm getting a ton of people asking me like, what weight should I do for that <laughs> exercise? And I get it. You know, they're new, but I'm like, I, I can't tell you without knowing who you are, like how much weight <laughs> you should lift on an exercise, right? Like you could be some jacked, huge dude. And I'm like, yep, for biceps curls, it's 15 pounds for everyone. No, right? So the way you push your weight is you want to, you do want, I, in my opinion, you, you're going to have a little bit of form deterioration on those last couple reps, right? You're going to start like, oh, oh, shit, you know, like <laughs> you've got to be able to push yourself not into the place of danger, right? And torn muscles really is because people are lifting like crazy and they're never taking care of their body. They're never go getting sports massage. They're never going to a chiropractor. Stuff is all tight. They have horrible, horrible mobility. They literally can't even pull their elbows behind their back. And they're trying to do these like big, huge bench presses. <laughs> you're going to get, you're going to tear something, you know, they're just not listening to their body or taking care of it. So pushing yourself, like I could do 20 pounds and make it really, really heavy on, I don't know, well, let's say 15 pounds. I can make that really heavy through higher reps, uh, slower tempos, uh, higher volume, more reps, you know, so like it's, it's relative, right? But we do want to push ourselves to the point of fatigue often, right? Push yourself to the point of fatigue in your workouts often and in different ways. There's strength, there's hypertrophy, there's muscular endurance. I'm not going to get all of that in this life. Okay. Um, yeah, marathons really do help you with positive self-talk. So that's my thing is if you are trying to integrate a new habit into your life, make it, try to make as many positive associations with it as you possibly freaking can get creative. Okay. How can I make this experience more enjoyable for me? What don't I like about this experience? How can I make it more fun? Um, and then the other thing is no, that there's going to be some resistance when you're building in a new habit because your brain is designed to take the path of least resistance. So like, let's say I tell my clients all the time. I'm like, if it, you have a day where you are just freaking like destroyed, you didn't sleep well, you got a ton of life stress. Maybe you like went off the rails, you like drink alcohol and you wake up and you're like, and you can't even see straight. <laughs> Don't go do the lifting workout that I gave you for that day. Go, just go walk, you know, do something that brings joy, calm, recover, Okay, like build positive associations with that thing. Not this David Goggins mentality of like, shut up, big, get to work. You know, like it's not like that. You're going to end up hating it. Okay. Um, yeah, that's it. That's it. It's not about shame and guilt. You're not a loser because you, you know, didn't do a day of this new thing that you're trying to do. Just learn from it. Just learn from it. It's like, why did I, why am I resisting that? What don't I like about it? What can I shift around in my life to like have this be a more consistent thing? Can I, maybe I can miss it. Maybe I can not wait to get back to it tomorrow. All right. But just, it's not, it's, uh, what's his name? Benjamin Hardy has a book called willpower doesn't work that I think or something like that. It's, it's not about willpower and you're just a horrible person that can't, it's, it's understanding your, your psyche and what makes you tick and talk. Okay. And after time you build enough positive association with something and you build a life flow around it where it's, that's just what you do and it becomes autopilot and there's no decision, but you keep doing it. Okay. All right. I gotta go. I gotta go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Stretching, stretching. Yes. Stretching is important. And so is sometimes sports massage and chiropractors because you might have some blockages, right? Like you're not just not getting good nervous system connection to certain areas because something's out of alignment. So those things are really crucial if you're pushing pedal to the metal on your body all the time. All right. I gotta go guys. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. Bye.